Good evening and welcome to the importance of reading birth to age three presentation. My name is Candace Welling and I'll be presenting this session this evening. Uh, this session will be recorded for future parent workshop use um, and posted on HCPS early childhood workshop page. By attending this session, you are agreeing on the terms of your participation to be recorded during this session. Thank you. So we are going to get started with our presentation this evening. Uh, as I previously stated, this is the importance of reading birth to age three. And my name is Candace Welling. I am a pre-K instructional coach with Harvard County Public Schools. So to get started, the key idea of our presentation is that the single most important activity for building the knowledge required for eventual success in reading is reading aloud to children. Um, and that quote is by Jim Trelease and his novel um, that he wrote, I used for this presentation and that will be in the final slide, the resources used in creating this presentation. Why reading aloud is important birth to three. These are really important years um, when building a child's vocabulary. Um, so just talking to your child really um, from birth to age three is building their vocabulary and reading to them even more so. It instills a like lifelong love of reading, creates and builds background knowledge, models fluency um, and using expression it's a fun way to spend time together as a family, can be a bonding experience. Um, it instills moral lessons and important values. So later on in toddler years, more towards the age of three, reading books that may, they may relate to and may help with important values. It can also be a great way to settle down and prepare for bedtime. It can be used as a nice calming activity. So the first thing that's important is to create an environment for reading. So having books all around and present in their environment tells children that reading is natural and it's a valuable part of their world. So as you can see here, I have a few examples of what you can do to create a little library from making just a bin of books in their room or somewhere around the house um to maybe creating a bookshelf in their room or somewhere around the house um, but just having them out and not tucked away somewhere so that they're out and they can be picked up at any time during the day reading for babies uh the biggest question a lot of parents have is when can i start reading to my baby um, you can start reading as soon as possible and there's actually uh, studies on reading to your child when they're in the womb is beneficial as well. Um, so really as, as soon as possible is great. Any books will work. Um, babies pick up more on emotions and tones than what you're actually reading the content of the story. Um, so really it doesn't matter what you're reading to them. It just matters that you're reading to them in, you know, a nice calming tone. Uh, the sound of your voice is what's important. It, research shows that the number of words that an infant is exposed to has a direct effect on their language development and literacy, whether they understand them immediately or not. Um, so that is developing their vocabulary. The more books you read, the more you talk to them, is just developing their vocabulary. At two months of age, babies might want to start being involved with tactile materials, so having texture and feeling books. Um, those will be beneficial around the age of two months and we'll get more into what books are more beneficial for each age level as we go forward. At seven to ten months of age, babies will begin to interact with what they're reading. Um, so explaining interesting pictures um, is what's really important. It's not super important to stick to the actual text and what's being said in the book. Um, if it's too long, shortening and summarizing is perfectly fine. What to look for in terms of baby books. So you're going to want to look for board books, things that are simple and durable enough to keep baby's attention. Um, so whether that's board books, the cardboard books, or the fabric books, or the kind of plastic, plasticky um, 
waterproof slick material, those are good as well. You're also going to want something familiar. So babies like aspects of everyday life, cars, people, places they're familiar with, um, animals, nature, anything like that. You're also going to want books that are visually appealing. So bright images, big patterns and loud and very clear images. Also hands on at four months, they may be interacting with the books. So this is where we were talking about. They might have fixed uh, features where they can pull a tab or feel something um, or like open and close. Anything like that would be really beneficial for that age. These are just a few notes to be wary of when you're picking out books that you're going to read with your child. Um, you want to make sure there's not too many words or overwhelming pictures with too many fine details. Um, and as I said before, if you do happen to pick up a book that has a lot of, you know, big paragraphs or a lot gets really wordy, feel free to just summarize that and that's that'll be just fine. Um, also skipping books with batteries and buttons to operate. So these might be fine for when they're, you know, kind of doing their independent more independent playtime, but when you're reading and bonding with them, you want to use more of your traditional book that doesn't distract from the reading. Um, whereas the music and the buttons and kind of stuff that can distract from you actually using your voice and reading to them. When you're reading with toddlers, this is when they're taking in vocabulary, language and structure, numbers, colors and shapes. So it goes beyond just learning what the words are, but you're also they're also now learning how to apply the words. Um, so they're not just taking in the vocabulary. They're going to start learning how to use it. This is when you can use books to expand your child's world. Um, so you can read them all different kinds of books. And this relates to the next point, which is children should be exposed to books that are both mirrors and windows. So you want to expose them to books that they can relate to um, personally and that they can see themselves in, but you also want to expose them to books that are more windows of things that they may not normally see in their environment. So for example, if you live in more of a city like environment, maybe you want to bring in more kind of rural farm like environments in the books or vice versa. If you live like kind of on a farm and the child sees farm animals and things, maybe you want to pick up a book that has like a city environment so they can get familiar with that. Bedtime is a familiar time at night and it's a really easy way to incorporate reading aloud every day as part of their routine. So just like they brush their teeth every night before they go to bed, you read a book every night before they go to bed, just embedding it in that daily routine so that way it gets done every day. You can also embed it in other daily routines as well, not just bedtime. Um, maybe you want to bring books with you while and while you're waiting for the bus, you can read one or while they're eating breakfast. Um, any downtime at all, if you carry extra books in your baby bag and you want to just pull, pull them out, that would be a great time. Also encourage your child to express what they like about reading. Um, so after you're done reading the book, oh, what did we like about that? Or what's your favorite, you know, thing about the book or even just about the time? Maybe it's not even about the book. Maybe they just like being with you. What to look for in regards to toddler books. Uh, so this is when you're going to move towards the picture books. Um, so you're expanding your child's awareness um, and they're going to engage in ex that exploration. Also, you're going to pay more attention to detail, so you're going to explore the parts of the book. So the front cover, the back cover, the spine, the pages, the words, the illustrations. Um, you can start talking about all of those things in regards to a book. You're also going to want to look beyond the words. So there's wordless picture books are a great way to have your child um, kind of talk about what's happening in the picture. Um, so they're not just relying on that vocabulary to tell them what's going on. They're really looking at the picture and thinking like, oh, what's happening in this story? Books with animals can help children reflect on problems from a safe emotional distance. So if they're having struggling with sharing or something like that, maybe bringing in a book that has um, animal characters and they're, you know, struggling with a similar problem so that they can relate to that. Also, um, you're going to want to start reinforcing any learning. So picture books have very cute 
ways of um, embedding that learning. So with counting or rhyming, shapes, um, any of that letters out the alphabet, any of that incorporated into your book is going to be great. Tips for reading aloud. So read a book out loud with your child and not necessarily to your child. So it's going to be an activity that you're doing together and it doesn't have to be your traditional. I'm going to sit and I'm going to read every single page of this book exactly how it says and you're going to sit quietly while I read it. Um, it's supposed to be a comfortable kind of fluid time. So pick a spot that's comfortable for you guys. Before you start reading, discuss the author, the illustrator, the title of the book, spend time looking at the cover, ask them what they think is going to happen in the book before you start reading. Don't be afraid to stop and answer questions or ask questions or any of that during the reading of the book. If the text is too long and you see that your child's getting re restless during the time, just shorten it and summarize. Um, and kind of keep that pace up so that you're getting through kind of the point of the story. You can point to pictures and have them talk about it during this time. Read with expression. So if there's an exclamation point, you know, really get excited about it. Or, you know, if a character is angry, you might want to make like more of an angry voice um, to kind of get them interested. Give them their own book what, or a stuffed animal. If they're like grabby and they need, really need something tactile to hold, um, giving them a stuffed animal or something that they can just kind of play with in their hands quietly while you're reading the story. It's okay to offer snacks or nurse or bottle feed while you're reading. Um, it's okay to make this kind of a multi-task time um, in regards to that. Also, letting them turn the pages is great. It gives them kind of a purpose and they love rhyming and finger plays. Um, so any of those kind of mother goose traditional rhymes, you have Jack and Jill, Humpty Dumpty. Those are really great um, for real read alouds because it gets them involved. And then once you say them over and over again, they'll start saying them with you. Practice makes perfect for the listener and the reader. So the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll feel and the easier it'll easier it will be and it'll be part of your routine and they'll be used to it so it'll make it easier for you these are some book suggestions um these are for babies so zero to one so color zoo has a lot of colors and it's a board book and it's very simple brown bear brown bear same very very simple and repetitive um all Llama Llama has some great rhyming. Um, it also has they have some some good um, more moral values and things like that in the Llama Llama stories too that work well. So really the Llama Llama would work for babies, but also toddlers as well. Um, the Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus for toddlers is really good. They find the pigeon very very funny. Um, so anything in regards to kind of calming and anything that your child is really interested in. So like if, if your child really likes the pigeon books, feel free to just use a bunch of the pigeon books if they really connect with those books. And I will also put this PowerPoint in the chat so that you'll have this book list um, to come back to if you would like. Here are some other suggestions regardless of age um, the Mother Goose collection. So as I said before, those nursery rhymes, Jack and Jill, Humpty Dumpty, um, Hickory Dickory Dock, any of those nursery rhymes are really, really great um, for rhyming, any rhyming books. The Dr. Seuss books are great for rhyming. You have um, There Was an Old Lady. Those are also really good for rhyming. Um, good Night Moon is a really good book to read before bedtime. Chicka Chicka Boom Boom is really great for um, learning the alphabet and familiarizing them with the letters and the letter names. This is a um, video and we are just going to watch a portion of it that describes how to and, and the importance of reading to babies. So it kind of sum, sums up what we've been talking about so far. So I am going to stop sharing my screen for one second. And I'm going to reshare and make sure that the sound is included. Alrighty. 
Oops. As a practicing pediatrician, parents often ask me, why should I be reading to my child? I've heard this advice, but I don't really understand why. Early experiences are really key to your child's learning across their whole lifetime, because reading is the fundamental skill for learning. Children learn from people. They need to have that back and forth interaction, that talking, singing, reading, playing, and that in turn causes their brain to wire in different ways that help their brain development over time. I want to reassure you that when you do these things and have those loving, rich, responsive interactions with your child, you're setting the foundation for a lifelong love of learning. Parents of young children often ask me about reading to their infant. How do I know that I'm reading to them the right way? Well, I want to reassure you that there's no one right way to read to your child. There's a few things to look for. A happy baby is one that babbles, responds to what you're doing. When you start to read, do they calm? Do they tune into you? A child who's used to reading will say, ah, I know what this is. This is that time when we look at something together. You do not need to read every single word on the page. You don't even need to read the entire book. Really, this is about exploring a book together. It's letting them touch things on the page and you responding to what they're touching or doing or saying. Let them manipulate the book and hold it. And finally, watch for them eagerly exploring the book with their eyes or their mouth or their hands. All of these are ways infants explore the world. So that is just a brief summary kind of of what where we have talked about so far. This is a book list that, as I said before, I'm going to put this uh, link to the PowerPoint that I have right in the chat for you guys. So that way you have access to the book list. Um, and can just come and use it at any point that you feel like you would want to. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in the chat. Um, and these are just some, some books that are recommended. And actually, these are from uh, the text that I'll share with you at the end that I used to create the presentation. Also, um, the Harford County Public Schools website has resources for your child, um, your early childhood education page. So if you go to the Harford County website and you go to parents and resources and then to early childhood, this is where you can find family and community support, mental and physical health, as well as educational resources for your child. Uh, and I am going to paste the um, rest of the sessions in the chat for you to go ahead and head to your next session because it's about that time. So I'm going to paste that right in there for you to have. And these are the books that I use for the presentation in case you're interested, How to Raise a Reader. Um, and the Read Aloud Handbook. Both have really um, great resources for reading to your child, and also they have book lists with a ton of books um, in case you're wondering what books you know you should start with or what books to get or something like that. So that is the end of the presentation. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat or unmute and let me know your questions. Um, if you don't have any questions, feel free to use the link in the chat to head over to your next session. So have a good evening.